Welcome to CompSite 360, the ultimate virtual summit for MS and computer science in the UK. This two-day summit will give you a 360-degree view around everything related to MS and computer science in the UK with subject knowledge experts and student mentors from top universities. Before we hear from the expert, we want to walk you through the CompSite community on the Nebula platform, a dedicated space for you to connect with other attendees and build lasting relationships with fellow computer science enthusiasts. Throughout this summit, you will interact with a number of subject knowledge experts. And if you wish to get a personalized one-on-one -on -one mentorship session or get your queries addressed, you can book a slot with them by visiting their Nebula profile. We believe that this session will enhance your learning experience and help you achieve your study abroad goals. Thank you for joining us today, and we hope you enjoy the summit. All right, hello and good afternoon, and welcome to the ComSize 360 program selection today. My name is Sarah, I'm an in-house language trainer, and I will be your host for this session. Before we get into our session, I'd like to give you a brief introduction on Nebula, ComSci360, and also a brief as to how this session will work. First of all, Nebula is a platform for students by students who are aspiring to work and study abroad. Nebula provides guidance from scholars, alumni, and professionals, and the resources to break barriers of fear and other challenges to survive in a foreign land. Now, ComSci360 is a summit organized by Nebula to help students aspiring to study MS in computer science programs in the UK. And we aim to provide all of you here today knowledge and resources you need to make informed decisions about your education and career. Okay, now for this session, please ensure that you are sitting in an area with undisturbed internet. And in order for this session to be an interactive one, you can use the audience chat, which you will find on your right side, to communicate your questions, responses, and if you're facing any te technical difficulties. Also, towards the end of the session, there will be a time for Q&A, so you can also, po also post your questions in the audience chat at that time as well. You may also like to post your questions during the chat, and that is completely fine too. We will be answering or taking your questions towards the end. All right, without any further ado, let me introduce our speakers for today. We have Sai Akash. Akash is an MS Applied Machine Learning student from Imperial College London. All right, and we also have Adil Pabi, an MS in Computer Science student from the University of Edinburgh. All right, and today they will be sharing their experiences and insights on how to stay in control of your MS applications when you're applying for computer science programs in the UK. Akash and Adit will also provide valuable tips and strategies on how to manage your time effectively, build your network, prepare for your interviews, stay on top of important deadlines. So everyone, I hope you have your pens and notebooks ready because I don't think you want to miss out on some valuable advice. Okay, so... Good morning, Akash and Adit. Thank you so much for joining us today. I think all of us are eager to hear more about you. So if I could ask Akash, if you'd like to go first and just tell us a little bit more about you and maybe just walk us through your educational journey so far and also how you ended up at Imperial College London. Yes, uh, hi, Sarah and uh, hi, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure uh, to be a part of the summit. Uh, so I'm Sai Akash. I hail from the uh, southern part of India from the city of Chennai. Uh, I did my uh, schooling in uh, Kendri Vidyalaya, uh, which is like present all over India, I guess. And uh, uh, I did my bachelor's in SSN College of Engineering, uh, Chennai. Uh, I did my bachelor's in Electronics and Communication Engineering. And uh, right now, uh, I'm a MSc Applied Machine Learning student at uh, Imperial College London. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And Adit, we would also love to hear about the same from you too. Could you just tell us a little bit more about yourself and also, you know, your educational journey so far? Yeah, sure. So hi, Sarah, and hi, everyone. Um, uh, my name is Adit, and I am currently, I recently graduated from the University of Edinburgh. I did a master's in computer science. Uh, before coming here, I was doing my computer science and engineering degree from uh, Vellore Institute of Technology in VIT. Um, I was always interested in doing computer science and specifically something related to the research bit. 
So that was one of the reasons why I decided to go abroad to go to a university such as Edinburgh, which focuses a lot on research. Perfect. All right. Seems like both of you have had quite the journey, right? From coming from India and uh, doing your studies abroad. So that's fantastic to hear. Um, and we're excited and waiting to hear more from you both. All right. Um, so, <clears throat> um, all of you present here may be in the process of applying or thinking about applying for the next intake. And as it goes, applying to universities can be super stressful, right? It's a super stressful process. But being aware of everything that comes with it can actually help ease the burden on us all, right? Especially for students who are applying. So um, everyone, this session is about how to stay in control of your applications while applying for your MS and CS programs in the UK. So I'm gonna start by asking, how would one go about preparing their applications? What are some of the materials needed for them? Now, either one of you can feel free to answer or add into what each other is saying. Um, so uh, the primary uh, step about uh, uh, perceiving a master's abroad is to like exactly choose the subject that you want to study. So I have seen people uh, who search for programs on the basis of the country they want to move into, which I think ideally should not be the case. You should uh, try to focus on the program you are interested in, and then you should uh, uh, look for uh, countries that can offer these programs. So search on the basis of the program that you want to pursue. Uh, that is a, a very good choice to on how to start your uh, application uh, process for uh, your master's abroad. And another important thing I would say is uh, uh, thoroughly research the uh, program that you are uh, looking at because um, the universities in the UK have very good websites uh, that, that have every single detail about the course, including the module information as well. So there could be an AI course which uh, doesn't have the modules you prefer. And there might be another AI course in a different university that exactly has the uh, stuff you want to study. So uh, be careful uh, in uh, choosing the uh, programs because uh, there are uh, very, very major changes uh, amongst different universities that can offer the same MSCs. Say the MSc in data science at Imperial may not be the same as MSc in data science in any other university. So uh, try to thoroughly research the modules like uh, the requirements and um, uh, uh, it's about your personal choice on what you want to pursue, even within computer science, because UK offers a lot of wonderful specializations. That is one big advantage of uh, taking up uh, master's degrees in the UK. So uh, try to uh, keep an account of the minor changes uh, between different programs, which could be a, a big factor uh, when you are taking up the degree it should be when you're coming for masters it's um, i feel it's purely out of passion because you want to do more, do more in the field that you uh, that you are interested in so i uh, thoroughly research the modules look for the entry requirements uh, ranking is one basis to go with um, so uh, yeah uh, adit you want to add uh, uh, some more factors on this yeah, sure. So, I mean, I agree with all, all your points. So, apart from that, I would say, like, if, whenever you're applying to a program, you should probably research thoroughly into the university, what, like he said, what modules they offer, what courses they offer. A lot of UK universities also offer you the choice to choose your own modules within courses. Like, if you're taking a very general course, such as I did, computer science, I could take a combination of AI-based topics and some distributed computing topics. So if you're interested in a more general uh, view, you can probably take a very general degree. Now, if you want to do something very specific like AI or data science, you have separate programs for that as well. So even like before you apply, you should probably research on what you actually want to study, what you want, and then you accordingly choose. And the rest is pretty much like it's on the application itself, what requirements you need from you. Like they probably have an English requirement, they probably have a, a minimum CGPA and all that, but that depends from university to university. Okay, thank you. Yes, that was quite insightful. And I hope um, all of you caught on to the key word which both Akash and Adit had said, which was research. So start by going about your process by researching and get as much information as you can and then, you know, move on from there. Thank you so much for that. Right. So now when it comes to applying for an MS in computer science uh, for one of the programs, 
Could you please enlighten us on the admission criteria for the program? For instance, uh, what would the minimum academic requirements be or your English language proficiency score have to be, things like that? When I applied to Edinburgh, they didn't have many requirements as such. Like, of course, there's an English language requirement, but even for, so basically there, some universities in India, they basically exempt that English language requirement because it depends on which university I come from. Like, since I was from VIT, which is a university in South India, and the medium of is, uh, like teaching is in English, that exempted my university, but like if you're not in that university list, you can either give your TOEFL exam or IELTS exam. I I think if I remember correctly, I submitted my TOEFL scores and the minimum TOEFL scores were like in the range of 2025 for each subject. Uh, apart from that, like if you're applying to a computer science course, like when I applied to my own course, they look for subjects uh, related to math and like basic computer science because when you're doing a master's course in Edinburgh, they don't really have conversion courses here. So they basically will teach you advanced topics. So they expect you to know something before. So it doesn't matter if you have done those subjects before in your university or you have done it as part of some boot camp or some online course. They just want a proof. They just want to know what you have done. And that also will form a minimum requirement. And of course, a math component is very strong. They want you to do discrete mathematics, statistics, which is very important. And uh, they don't really have a CGP requirement as such, but of course, because it's a research-based course and it, it involves a lot of studying, they prefer if you have a good CGP. I would agree with all of the points that uh, Adit put, uh, put forth. So uh, English language requirements are a requirement like uh, you have to give either of these uh, recognized tests. It could be IELTS, it could be TOEFL, it could be... Now we have easier options in the name of Duolingo as well. So. You have to give one of these tests uh, uh, and uh, uh, the band of scores for these tests also vary from university to university as well. And when it comes to the actual academic requirements uh, that they want, uh, uh, he was spot on, Adit was spot on because they require uh, substantial uh, mathematics uh, modules, which you should have taken up in your bachelor's. Um, he said discrete maths. Uh, linear algebra for uh, that uh, that matter and probability theory is a very important course that you may must have done during your um, bachelor's it could be a bsc or it could be uh, engineering but uh, you have to be um, proficient in uh, these portions of mathematics and calculus as well so these are some modules they primarily look for if you are applying for computer science degrees and some basic computer science stuff as well because uh, you have it's like uh, they uh, look for a couple of uh, modules uh, at least uh, about uh, programming in different languages data structures and stuff like that so um, these are the basic entry requirements and uh, of course in UK they roll out conditional offers so they have mm -hmm. something like um, uh, a condition where you have to achieve a certain CGPA to get into that university or accept that offer because you might have the offer, but uh, if it happens that you don't have the CGPA that they have mentioned out in the conditions, then you won't be able to take up your place in the university. So you have to be wary of that. Some universities may have high CGPA requirements and some may not. So uh, the modules, what you do in your bachelor's have a uh, very important, uh, they play a very important part in your application process because, of course, you'll be uploading all your transcripts. So, mm. uh, you have to be uh, very, very extremely careful. If you have the idea of uh, pursuing a master's right from the beginning, you are doing a bachelor's, then you have to take into account these things and uh, choose appropriate modules in your bachelor's as well. Yeah. Right. Perfect. Thank you both for sharing those insights with us. Um, I think that was very helpful. For us, I hope everybody's noting down these points that Adit and Akash are telling us. They're quite important, so do keep your make sure you have your notebooks handy and make sure you're taking notes, right? So everyone, we know that applying for colleges and universities is a time-sensitive process, right? And it gets especially confusing when we're applying to many colleges. So Akash, if I could ask you first, and then Adit, if you'd like to um, chime in whenever, uh, could you please share your two cents? on time management strategies in order to effectively prepare for your application and or applications. Yeah, 
uh that's a very good question i and i think that's like the most important part of the entire application pro process because we know applying to like multiple universities can be extremely taxing so um what i would say is uh applying to universities as such may not uh, should not be very sequential say don't research one single university and apply and then go for the next university what i did was i researched whatever universities that i wanted to apply for right at the start so uh, for example uh, i had like an excel sheet which talks about every important detail for every single university uh, say the ielts requirement for that particular university um, and say the research groups that you are interested in which you want to put forth in your sop the professors or supervisors you are interested to work under it's uh, it's a basic thing to research all these things for these universities so try to do this research beforehand like at least for five uni universities i would say of course uh, you don't have the idea of like applying to every single university you know so i uh, do it for the first five opportunity uh, first five universities which you consider are your are going to be your primary options so you are interested to go to those five universities in the beginning so try to research them uh, in the beginning and then uh, try to move forward with the process like um the once we have an excel sheet that can talk about every requirement and every detail for a specific application then it's just about jotting these down on their application pages so uh, i think as such the fill, uh, filling the applications is not the taxing part but uh, may doing this research and of course we'll get into that part of sops and lors later so uh, i would say uh, do a thorough research at the beginning for at least uh limited set of universities that you want to apply to and then move forward with the application process so i would agree with him like the idea of having an excel sheet with the universities you are interested in that's a very good idea because you know which universities you are interested in one other thing which i will also suggest is to note down all the deadlines because uk universities can have a lot of deadlines some some can, like the big ones in oxbridge usually they get over by january like the one in i am here in that gets over by april so it's very important to know when the applications will end because then you can even prioritize which applications you will currently fill and which you currently will not and also like when it comes to the sop bit a lot of the universities will require an sop and each university will probably have a different word requirement so you may not be able to use the same sop for every university but you will have some basic points which you mention in each sop which you can use it so you can probably carry over that and you can save some time in that sense as well and again up after that filling the application is pretty much it's not very difficult it is you can just take a day or two and perfect yes i absolutely love the idea of the fact of keeping an excel sheet and making sure you have those headings because again it's not one college that a lot of people would be applying to right it's many colleges so to keep track of that i think excel sheet is a great way to keep all your thoughts organized i mean again those of you out there who are writers if you just like to do it old school and are not too tech savvy or whatever it is and you like to write it down in your notebooks or again um on an excel sheet however you'd like to do it i think that's a great way to organize um how you're going to uh, you know apply to these different colleges thank you so much for sharing that valuable piece of um advice and information now adit actually discussed a little bit about deadlines right so i'm curious um how both of you you know kind of kept track of these important deadlines and the dates when you were applying could you give us some tips on that please yeah so in my case uh i apart from like having the deadlines down in my excel sheet i also used to set up these uh, reminders on my calendar like i use google calendar so i would set up reminders for like 2 3 4 days before submitting the application itself for the deadline day and also what happens is that because these are uk based applications so their deadline usually ends much later or much before what our time is so mm -hmm. like sometimes when you are filling applications on deadline day and you are not really you don't you not really show sure when it's going to end sometimes the application might just be already the uh, deadline might already be over and you can't do anything about it so that's also important a lot of the universities will probably not mention what gmt what i like bsc the application will end or they will mention but you don't really realize it so you should also keep that in mind when you are submitting your application then of course you pretty much have to submit like some universities allow you to submit your documents even after filling even after the deadline when you submitted the applications some universities may not allow that so you need to probably look at that as well depending on each university 
yeah actually you were spot on with the answer because uh, my approach was pretty simple i had a whiteboard in my home and i used to uh, write all the names of the universities and their uh, deadlines so uh, what uh, that, uh, every time i used to walk into that room i used to get a peak of those deadlines so uh, it used to help me schedule or prioritize my tasks uh, accordingly so that uh, I, I i always used to complete like the applications much before the deadlines so of course the uh, time stuff matters if you are if you have a time crunch and uh, you are uh, applying for multiple universities and probably you lost track of one university and its deadline so in that case the time thing is very important because the timelines like uh, uh, it's like five and a half hours or in the summer approximately four and a half hours uh, behind us so you have to be uh, careful uh, when you try to upload it and stuff like that so uh, that is one important thing and my approach was it's it's just simple i just uh, wrote it on a board i just kept it like that so every time i used to uh, walk through that room i used to get reminded of the deadlines and yeah um, my approach for this was pretty simple i would say oh great you know i i am very impressed as um, just hearing about how you guys kept you know were organized during this whole process i'm i'm i feel that i'm a very organized person but hearing this it just made me so happy to hear how it is and i hope everybody else who's here today for the session um you keep that in mind that organization is quite important as well so we talked about one point is research but also being organized so that you know you know your dates, you know your times, you know the deadline so that you can hit that on the spot and get into your dream college, right? All right. So also another question that we'd like to um, know the answer from both of you is the importance of networking and how to build connections, especially when it comes to the application process. Yeah, I, I think I'll take this up. Yeah, okay. yes. Uh, so. Um, networking is, of course, a very important part of the application process. Um, it could come in various forms because uh, there is a possibility that probably you worked under a research lab under a particular professor. It could be that. It could be your friends. It could be your relatives. Uh, it could be anyone. Uh, but um, any information that they can give you in this process is extremely valuable because that was the case uh, in my story because uh, my uncle, uh, he lives here uh, in a county called Gloucester. Uh, so uh, he gave me ideas and um, on how to write the SOPs as well. So he knows, of course, like uh, how the stuff is here, what they look for in a particular applicant. And, uh, 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 and also to apply for different universities that had very good programs in data science, in AI and stuff, because he knew what my interest was. Because when I discussed with him, I could share what my interest is and uh, he they always do the best for you that's what i would say any of your uh, any uh, your any of your persons in the corner in your contact network they will of course uh, try to uh, give out the best for you so uh, and also um, we can of course look stuff up on google quora and whatever but uh, uh, people who live here they of course have the real experience of uh, how things are done here so uh, I feel uh, that's very valuable. So connect with people who live in the appropriate country where you are applying to, not just for UK for that matter. It could be US, it could be any other country in the Europe as well. So connect with them, uh, try to uh, discuss what your interest is and uh, try to ask them if there are universities that offer such courses. Like, uh, Of course, they'll t take out some of their time to research this and let you know. And with people from that particular place, their advice can be even more valuable because uh, it, it can be uh, more relatable to what is actually happening with the process than what we can look up on probably Google or any other uh, social media for that matter. Uh, yeah, that's that. Absolutely. Adit, would you like to add to this or share? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So in my case, when I was applying to universities, um, Initially, when I didn't really have any people to talk to because it's not easy to find people, but eventually I started using LinkedIn and LinkedIn is a great resource to connect with people. Like if you just search on LinkedIn, like if you just search the degree name and you write the college name, you will find a list of people. And then 
like if you want to talk to some indian you probably find a lot of indians for each university so you just open their page you send them a connection request you ask them for their time so i also i talked to a lot of people from edinburgh i talked to a lot of people from london with that and like i had asked my doubts and how it goes i also in my own university i had some alumni who had also studied from the university of edinburgh not even from my university but like from university in the uk so i even connected to them to ask them for any tips and advice and yes that's pretty much it really you can like ask your alumni you can ask your connections or sometimes like in the last case if you don't have any other option you can just search online sometimes people will write about the experiences in these colleges and how it works so yeah these are pretty much the only options you have fantastic yeah i'd like to add to what you both had said and said um that actually yes you can always go online you can always go on google and just search these things but having that personal relationship by contacting a person or you know just to emphasize what both adit and akash said having somebody who's there already in the uk or the us or wherever you're applying to and getting that first hand information about them kind of about the place about the university that you're going to apply to that first um hand information is very very important and um it's very it's really great to hear that you guys were lucky enough um to have some sort of live interaction with somebody who was there and um maybe some sort of mentorship also would have helped you um when again like uh, akash said preparing for his sop he had asked his uncle um the thing of networking especially when it comes to lors um connecting with your professors connecting with your research um leaders whoever it is it's very very important so i think it's safe to say that also um everyone who's present here today do network do find maybe different forums connect and um make sure you get all that information that you can in order to help you apply fantastic um all right and the final question that i have for both of you is um i'm sure i'm asking on behalf of everyone present here and that is um please could you share your thoughts and advice on the on like interview preparation tips probably like what we should expect or what we should wear a lot of people always think that how we should go about answering common questions that would be asked to us yeah sure so in my case like when i was applying to most of the uk masters programs um they don't really have an interview component uh mostly there only phd programs which have interviews like even when i apply to edinburgh and i apply to cardiff and all that they just tell you your result quickly but like when i when i used to give interviews like when i used to give job interviews i mean of course a common strategy is to just prepare for whatever position whatever area you are applying in like if even like if it comes to university you should uh, research like if you if you have an interview with the professor you should research about the professor what areas what subjects do they teach and you just also like uh, research on what you want what you expect from the university and you just prepare uh, prepare related to that and as for a dress code it's pretty much you get pretty much wear a simple shirt and like just uh, comb your hair well and that's pretty much it and like uh, if you if they shave your beard as well and that's pretty much it you just need to prepare well and just uh, be yourself be honest and just give the interview you like to add anything akash uh yeah i guess uh, even i never had uh, any interview for uh, msc applications as such um, i think that's the thing about that's the thing for business schools here applying to business schools and business programs probably have these interviews uh, in almost all universities yeah. but uh, for uh, uh msc programs in stem uh, i don't think uh, there are uh, online interviews for most of the universities as far as i know um but the application process is uh, thoroughly through your uh, transcripts from your bachelor's degree and your uh, statement of purpose and your uh, letter of recommendations they have uh, academic uh, uh, personnel who assess these and they roll out your offers so if at all there arises a case where you have to uh, attend a particular interview then probably i think adit was spot on you have uh, the dress code uh, is smart casual and uh, please uh, uh, go on and be confident about what you are talking uh, phd's of course yeah people who are trying to apply for phd's if you have an idea to apply for a phd uh, you have to be uh, prepared for this because uh, there will be a thorough technical uh, a uh, questionnaire for i uh, say 45 minutes or probably 1 hour 
where they will thoroughly research you about your, about the depth of your knowledge about the research topic you have proposed them to work on about and all that but uh, for msc programs i don't think there are interviews but if there are then try to follow the uh, general uh, smart casual dress code and be confident about uh, what you're talking i think uh, that should be it yeah perfect great okay i think everybody here can take a little bit of a sigh of relief to know that there probably won't be an interview so that's good to know right but still always be prepared whenever and whenever you have to right Okay, Akash and Adit, thank you so much for this insightful session. Everybody here who's present today, it's your turn to interact with Akash and Adit. So you can use the audience chat to type in your questions and we'll go through them one by one. Um, as I see here, um, we'd like to hear from both of you, maybe Adit first and then Akash, if you'd like to um, respond to this. They would like to know sure. what topics have you researched on? Uh, like when you're applying i mean it depends on what you want like if i am interested in let's say doing ai i would probably search for universities and i will probably search for papers and professors who work in this field like even in ai you'll have lots of spe uh, spe specialities like if you want to do natural language processing so that matters what exactly are you interested in then you start searching on the universities what the university offers what modules do they offer? What courses do they offer? Are you more into a research-based curriculum or you want more of a teaching-based curriculum? So I would say these are the, probably the most important things to research on. And then you just keep applying to universities and you like keep asking other people on their like for their advice on like how the university teaches it. A lot of universities will also have free online lectures. You can get a feel of how they teach and you can get an experience of like how it actually works so that's pretty much it and then you just apply and you hope for the best right great Akash, would you like to add anything you'd like to add um i think uh, that was uh, pretty much it because uh, when you start to research about uh, programs it uh, as i said uh, uh, in the initial stage of the talk uh, you have to thoroughly research every single module because the universities in UK, of course, they provide you all the information. They can say even what they teach in every module. So you can you have access to pretty much all the information, right? So why not make use of it? Like uh, if you if you find a lack of compatibility in the modules with your interest and what the modules offer, then probably it's not uh, the right place to go to. So uh, um, th there is the scope of that research which you can carry out with uk universities i will say that is a very big added advantage when you apply to uk so um that is one thing and of course they have a variety of specializations to keep track of the different modules or the changes that you have amongst these things and of course there are two things like he said uh, there are postgraduate taught courses and there are postgraduate research courses in the uk so you have to be aware of that and um, it's uh, then it it just then boils down to your particular interest if you want to work on research or if you want to learn something land a job offer after a year uh, once you're done with your msc uh, it's uh, pretty much about uh, your own interest so there is you have sources to research uh, so it just uh, it's just about the alignment of your interest and uh, uh, curriculum yeah that's it. Absolutely, makes sense. So, also one more question was uh, Sumit is asking if you can name some helpful websites. I think Adit also said like the university websites would help you, and also Akash said that. Do you have any other um, websites that could be helpful for um, our attendees or anyone to, that they could check out to help them with this? So, in my case, I mean, apart from the university websites. Uh, there's also like there is Quora. You can usually search for a course on Quora. You, there's also YouTube where you can. A lot of the university students usually they create a vlog or something where they detail their university experience. So that might also be useful for you. If not for your particular program, then just the university life in general and what you can expect. Um, apart from that, there's also like online forums like Reddit and. Uh, only specific to the UK universities, there's this website called Student Room, which is a UK-based website. It's similar to a university forum, and it's just focused on UK-based programs. So that also can be very useful, not just for universities, but for like even jobs and all that. So I, I I also got a lot of help from that website because it was 
just focused towards UK based university. So there were only students in that website. So that was also very useful. Hush, any other websites that had helped you as well? I think there is a website called uh, Yorket, which can talk about the acceptance rates and uh, uh, the rankings and stuff like that, and the basic entry requirements as well. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm not sure if there is a website or a tool which can keep track of application deadlines. I would say a whiteboard is the best thing you can have. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I think uh, the student room, yeah, it can answer almost all the questions regarding to different universities because you can have threads for different universities. Say there is an entire thread where people from Imperial discuss stuff about applications or uh, the process or uh, it could be anything. And there is a separate thread for say King's College London. There's a separate thread for say University of Edinburgh. So um, you can get the answer for your specific university at least, if not for your specific program. So I think when it comes to the application process, um, you can get additional information from these sources, but the go-to uh, source should be the university's website because it's pretty much clear. Um, they have all the information that you need for an application uh, probably in the university website itself. So I think that should be fine. Perfect. All right. Um, we have another question, and that's from Hannah. And she's asking, what's something different I could add to my application that would make me stand out? OK. So I would uh, like to uh, take up that question. Uh, so uh, one important thing I would say is it's not about, pro it's, pro it's not even about the number of projects that you do. Even if it's a single project, and it has, uh, say, uh, uh, I would say, which can be deployed for a very good use in the society. They would look for candidates that do that because they are focused on research that uh, contribute to the society, the universities here. So if you can have a research project probably, which can, uh, which was at least on the track of contributing something to the society. So in that case, that would be uh, very, very useful. and. Uh, technical degrees in computer science, AI, machine learning, and data science for that matter. Any top tier uh, conference publications and journal publications, please definitely mention them in your SOPs because uh, they look for such uh, strong candidates who have had this uh, good research skills in order to publish uh, in these uh, co conferences and journals. So uh, mention these achievements and um, just don't hesitate about uh, uh, putting for some of your achievements in the SOP. If the word limit permits, just go and put all of them, I would say, because uh, why put less when you have more, right? So uh, you should probably work on that policy and do not hesitate to uh, put uh, anything uh, which is relevant to your SOP. Do not hesitate thinking this might not be a much useful thing. This might be a, a lower level of achievement or something like that. You have achieved something, you have learned something, you are good to go. You can definitely add it in your SOP. I would say so the, yeah those are a few things like your publications your very important projects say for uh, engineering people from people from engineering background you can definitely put your final year project uh, what you worked on how it's relevant to what you are about what the program you're applying to stuff like that that's a very important thing you have to consider uh, so these are some factors I would say which you can jot down in your SOP to make your uh, application standout top tier conference publications and journal publications are like it's a top notch uh, factor to have it's a it adds like a very good strength to your application yeah that's it. perfect Adit, would you like to add anything to that yeah sure i mean yeah so basically when you're applying i guess the most important part even in this case is to thoroughly research on what area you're interested in and like even if an area interested in what professors are you interested to work with so like in the sop if you like if you can mention like let's say what uh what subjects the professor has worked on you can probably mention a paper or two in which they were very interested in and you can give your insights on that you can say how it benefited you you can link their papers to your own personal achievements like your their own research like your own personal interests and that also helps a lot and apart from that, I can just say that like a lot of times the SOP will not, you don't have much words to write. The word limit will be very less. 
so like if you have a very small word limit you should only uh, have the most relevant details possible like you should probably cut the clutter and just add whatever you think is uh, suited for this technical course like if you're doing a computer science degree you should probably only talk about your computer science achievements because they'll only probably look at that when you're looking for a candidate because they also have like lor and all that for your character and for your personality so i would say that's also pretty important yeah so i would like to just add uh, one more point to this uh, when you are writing your sop try to complete your sop because there are a few things that the universities uh, want you to answer in an sop so don't do it in uh, parts like don't answer like four of the questions and say like that's that was the word limit i was not able to uh, put everything into the sop and stuff like that uh, try to be concise and um answer all the questions that the university expects you, expects you to say oh, what background you are from why you want to do this do you have the experience to do this program like do you have the prior knowledge in your bachelor's and why this university what interested you in this university so that you wanted to pursue an msc here mm -hmm. and finally what is your future plan like what do you want to do after the msc like try to jot down these important points in your sop so that you have a complete sop uh, as a result when you it's like automatically when you answer these questions at the end when you read it you will think you have an uh, have a complete sop so that's how sop works and yeah uh, that's how the completion is a very important part and uh, very strictly be prudent about the word limit very strictly adhere to it because here they are very strict about word limit if they say this is the word limit they want you to have an sop which uh, uh, is within the word limit so uh, don't put extra words like uh, adit said don't beat around the bush be concise whatever you want to say and i think you should be good yeah fantastic loving the answers um we have time for one last question so i'll just quickly read it out to you Sumit is asking, now we touched a little bit about English language proficiency. So he's asking, should I consider taking the IELTS as part of submitting an English language profici proficiency certificate? Yeah, I, I think uh, you should. Uh, IELTS is like widely accepted, like all over Europe. So I think, yeah, IELTS, yeah. Uh, IELTS requires uh, a good deal of effort. I won't say it's very easy. I won't say it's very tough. But uh, you'll have to be, uh, you have to be prepared for to take up such an exam because, uh, of course, uh, the, in India you it's like you pay a lot of money to uh, take a single exam on a particular uh, time slot. So you have to be really careful about the preparations you put in, and um, also be aware of the language requirements for the particular university you are applying to. Some may require a a lower band score in IELTS and some might require a higher band. So you have to be aware of that and put preparations accordingly. And I would say, uh, please uh, take up IELTS uh, in order to um, um, satisfy the language proficiency condition of your offer. Yeah. Okay. Um, Adit, would you like to add anything or are you all in the same boat? Yeah, sure. I add something. So I didn't give the IELTS. I personally give the TOEFL, and these two exams are probably the most popular English proficiency tests. And pretty much, I think whenever whenever I was like browsing, pretty much any university will accept your TOEFL score as well. So if you can't give the IELTS, if you want to give the TOEFL, because if you if you're applying to universities outside Europe as well, then I would highly suggest giving the TOEFL as well instead of the IELTS. And I guess the major difference in TOEFL and IELTS is probably in the speaking part, from what I've understood in IELTS, usually speak with the person. In TOEFL, usually speak to a computer. So if you're comfortable with uh, speaking to a person or if you're comfortable with speaking to a computer, then you can decide as well on that basis. I don't think there's much difference in the course. It's roughly the same. Right. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that, both of you. All right, everyone, and Adit and Akash, we've come to the end of the session and also the Q&A session. Um, I just want to thank you, Akash and Adit, for joining us today and sharing your insights. Um, I hope you enjoyed being with us here today. Yeah, yes, uh, definitely. It was a, a pleasure to uh, uh, be a part of this summit because uh, um, 
at least i am happy in that sense that we are helping people in the same line who want to get here so that's a very uh, very good thing and of course our host yeah you did a great job uh, in hosting the entire session so yeah um i think uh, uh, we answered like the most crucial questions for the application process and um yeah and that's it so i enjoyed talking here i would say thank you so much we really enjoyed having you both on board today to provide such insightful advice um i just like to tell the participants here today please grab the chance to connect with akash and adit on the nebula platform don't miss that chance um thank you also for you know being there on the platform with us in order to provide more advice um also before we leave i just like to take this opportunity if you don't mind um to quickly emphasize a topic again that was discussed during the session and that again is your english proficiency score as i mentioned at the beginning i am also a language trainer with specialization in tesol and ielts so again if you're looking to study abroad and you require ielts preparation or an ielts preparation mentor you can connect with me on nebula.com all right also we have a couple more sessions for the rest of the day be sure to check up on those upcoming sessions uh just to give you a heads up on what's next we have a breakout session which will give you the opportunity to network and interact and discuss with fellow aspirants um again as um adit and akash said today networking is quite important so do take up that opportunity to connect with um fellow aspirants or uh, alumni that will be present there and just have a chat with them also the last sessions for the day will be happening from 5 p.m. so i'll just give you a rundown on what that is um for the program selection track you will have the opportunity to participate in an ask me anything panel discussion regarding program selection featuring students from the university of southampton and the university of leeds right on the scholarship and grants track we have a session on understanding international student recruitment trends in the uk with namita and finally i will be seeing you again at, for a session at 5 pm on internships part time and post study jobs in the uk um i think these links have been put in the audience chat right so you can go ahead and um join those once again thank you everyone for joining us and a special thanks to akash and adit we were so happy to have you on board all the best for you, and we'll see you for the upcoming sessions thank you thank you see you have a good day Thank you too. Thank you.